Johnny Depp. Right. Betty, how are you? Nice right. to have you here. This is Dana Fleming. Nice to see you. Have a seat, Betty. Betty, I'm really happy that you're here because I, I, I see you too often on, on the talk shows. Do you do many of them? No. 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 Why? Uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world, but... You're really shy, aren't you? Uh, yeah, a little bit. But it's tough to do talk shows and so on, but anyway, I'm really thrilled that you're here, and thank oh, you very thank much no, for I'm, coming. I'm, I'm happy to be here. But this is some story. Now, uh, you started out in music, right, with your own yeah. rock band in Florida? Yeah. And then decided to go to L.A. and see what was doing out there with, yeah. the, with the band? Yes, right. exactly. So then what happened? The band kind of disbanded, did they? Uh, uh, yes, uh, the band broke up, and then... Somehow there was this mistake, and I got hired to do a film. Yeah, but you, yeah, you were you were just kind of palling around with a guy. Who oh, was uh, Nicholas Nick Cage. Cage? Yeah, Nicholas, Nicholas Cage. Cage. Yeah. And he said, "Why don't you come in and just uh, see what goes on at this reading?" Yeah, he just he sent me to meet his agent, and uh, she sent me to meet Wes Craven. Yeah, right. Who directed the film, and I read for him, and he said, "Okay." Mm -hmm. You hadn't aspired at all to be an actor. No, 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 no. What? No. A, that's that's really strange. Yes. You had no idea even how to read. For a part, I mean, they no, just... I had no idea about marks or yeah. key mm -hmm. lights mm -hmm. or cameras. What or... kind of a character did you play in Nightmare again? Uh, a geek, basically. A geek. <laughs> <laughs> it was baptism by fire, though, wasn't it? Very much. So you got the acting bug on this film, right? Uh, not so much. At that point, I just wanted to uh, survive. Yeah. Pick up a paycheck and go basically, on with your yeah, life. I just wanted to keep getting paychecks. Right. So then, what happened after the movie <clears throat> came out? Um. Movie came out and then I, uh, the band had been broken up, so I didn't really have a band to go back to. Mm -hmm. So I just pursued it. Pursued it. Yeah. Right. What was yeah. the next thing after that? Was Twenty One Jump Street right after that? No, Jump Street didn't happen until '86. I think. Yeah. yeah. So what did you do after? A couple more films? Yeah, a couple more films. Platoon yeah. was one of them, wasn't Platoon, it? Yeah. yeah. Oscar yeah. Uh, Oliver Stone's uh, big movie. Yeah. And then, uh, but the Edward Scissorhands movie. Uh, I mean, mm. that was such an unusual part. First of all. Is that what appealed to you about that movie, the, the fact that this guy was different? Yeah, what, what appealed to me mostly was when I read it, 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 it hit me so hard, this, mm -hmm. the idea of this, uh, this character. But it was also very challenging because there was nothing to base him on, really. Yeah, right, just, exactly. He's not human, he's not a robot, he's mm -hmm. not... Him. So I based him on a... Uh, on dogs that I've had. Uh, really? What do you mean? Several dogs. On dogs? Dogs. Yeah. Yes. How, what's the correlation there? Um, just that uh, the the uh, the unconditional love of a dog, you know, when I you see, yes. maybe you scold the dog and he goes into the corner, but yeah. suddenly if you call him back, he'll he's he's right back. You know, and everything right. is forgotten. And, and, and I saw that in this character. He was he was really a, a lovable character. You know, my six-year-old said, my children, you said something in an interview that all of your nieces and nephews liked it, your young nieces and nephews. So did my children. My children watch it yeah. every time it comes on cable. Mm -hmm. And my six-year-old said, Mommy, he's talking with his eyes. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that, now, is that the that's best great. compliment anyone could give you? I mean, yeah, that's better that's than anything nice. we could mm -hmm. ever say. After you, when you, right before you did this, so you were getting like 10,000 letters a month from 21 Jump Street, something like that I read. And this seems like an unusual thing for you to do. Were you kind of trying to hide behind the mask of Edward Scissorhands because you had had so much, so much publicity? Well, uh, you know, when I was on that series, there's a, there's a real sort of uh, pigeonholing thing that you have to fight because it's, it's, it's very dangerous, those labels that they give you, you know, the... Teen Idol. The heartthrob, yeah. uh, Teen Idol, mm -hmm. uh, you know, all that new James Dean stuff is, is, is a lot of crap. It really is very dangerous and very limiting. So mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to be able to... So you broke out in that movie? Yeah, just to try to go against the grain a bit. Here. Now what about uh, the, uh, the hands, the scissors themselves? Yeah. Uh, you, you manipulated them beautifully. I suppose you worked a lot with them, right? Yeah, I was real lucky because I had them, uh, I had them a couple of months before we started shooting. Uh -huh. yes, there they are. And you learned to uh, control them and, uh, and work them. Uh, I even read somewhere that you went to sleep with them. I mean, you took them to bed with you. Uh, yeah, I, Wasn't that I, a little I, dangerous? Uh... <laughs> yes, yes. Depending on the mood you're in. <laughs> Very Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. Uh, yeah, I, 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 uh, I tried. I wanted to get used to them, so I, I put them on before I went to sleep. 
and uh, woke up the next morning. They were uh, they had been flung across the room and they had some gouge marks. Oh, yeah. They really That's were good. sharp. They were truly sharp. Yes, yeah. Do you still have them, Johnny, around the house somewhere? Yes, yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. You take them to bed every once in a while? No. Just for old time's sake, feel maybe. That, uh, feel a little nostalgic tonight, I'll... Yeah. Now, Johnny has, you know, we all have our little uh, fetishes and our fascinations and our hobbies and so on, and Johnny seems to be fascinated with bugs. Right? Yes. Insects. Uh, especially cockroaches. Roaches? Yes. As a matter I, of fact, uh, I, I understand that you've got them framed in, in, in your home. I have several framed bugs, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I do. Why is that, Johnny? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. <laughs> what I was just, your uh, I inspiration just, for it? Um, I've always liked bugs, and, and uh, I've always sort of had this fascination with cockroaches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I grew up around them in, you know, South Florida. Sure. Lots of cockroaches. Sure. And, uh, I don't know, I just sort of liked them. Also, there was this book, uh, um, called, uh, this, this Franz Kafka book called The Metamorphosis, where the guy, the first line in the book is that he wakes up and he's become a giant water bug. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a great story. A, a yeah. good time, a good time. It would be a handy time to bring out those scissors. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The lance a few roaches. Yeah. Oh. You, are you uh, are you fascinated with uh, the old time comedians, uh, Buster Keaton, uh, mm. uh, Chaplin, yes. and all of their moves and so? Because I see a lot of that in, in your work. As a matter of fact, this character that you play he plays a guy named Sam mm -hmm. in this Benny and June movie. He seems to be obsessed with uh, with, with Keaton with and, and Chaplin Keaton. and so on. Yes, and you are personally as well, huh? Very much so. I mean, uh, uh, Keaton is is one of 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 cinema. I think. Uh, I mean, he's. He, I don't think he's ever been fully recognized as the genius he was. I mean, he was a real master of expression. So you've watched his old movies over and over again? Yeah, hundreds of times. Well, you know, you, I read a review that said that you're going to out Buster, Buster Keaton. Impossible, no. That's impossible. Uh, but I mean, you're, you're, the, as I said earlier, the command of physical comedy that you have, I'm surprised that we haven't seen you do it before this film. Um, well, I never really had the opportunity. That's right. Is this, this we'll movie, do it again. This movie. Oh, that's so cool. All right, in case you haven't seen this movie, let's uh, tell you a little bit about it. Um, is your character uh, just obsessed with uh, Keaton, or is he, uh, is he uh, off, uh, off center a little bit as well? Sam is, uh, yes, say? I'd say he, he's very off center. He's, yeah. uh, he's not totally well. Right. Um, Sam's way of dealing with reality and dealing with people um, is to escape mm -hmm. I into the world of silent films and to, into the world of Keaton. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's his sort of identity. Protection, sure. Yes, his protection from the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh. falls in love with a, a young lady who also uh, is uh, uh, mentally, uh, ha has a problem. Yes. But these two souls find each other and, uh, and uh, love each other. And we're going to show you a clip now in, uh, in a dining uh, room where uh, they're sitting at a counter and all of a sudden you pick up the roles and do a very cute little dance with that uh, with these roles you know as al al almost becomes Keaton right in front of your eyes all right let's take a look now at Johnny Depp Benny and June <laughs> Now, Johnny's got a couple of other, he's red hot right now. He's got a couple yes. of other films that are coming out soon. One of them called Arizona Dream with the Faye Dunaway and Jerry Lewis. Yes. That, that's some cast. Another right there. comedy? Is it? Uh, yeah, a bit of both. You know, now, did you enjoy working me. with Jerry Lewis, one of the master clowns of... Uh, Very much. Yeah. I, learned, I learned a lot yeah. from Jerry and from Faye. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And also uh, Gilbert uh, Grape with Juliette Lewis, who's red hot right now, and Mary Steenburgen. Yes. Coming out this summer? Uh, I believe... Gilbert Grave is October, I think. Okay. So, Johnny, look what happened to you. Little rock band in Florida, go out to Hollywood. <laughs> well, I'll go, I'll sit, I'll watch what goes on. In a movie? Stardom! Just a uh, <laughs> mistake, big mistake. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, absolutely Luke. a dynamite story, John. Yeah. I've just been, uh, just been real lucky, you know, real lucky. Well, there's a little luck in that, but boy, you, when you needed to call on the talent, it was there. That little piece of business with the, with the roles. I mean, because of that musical background, it helped you a lot, right? Ah, uh, yes, actually, the timing. Yeah, the, the, timing. the timing. The timing. Good, yes. good. I'm going to use that. Uh... Oh, you have to see the film. The film is absolutely one of the, my all-time favorites. Oh. I told you that backstage, and I'm going to say it now. Yeah, it really, you. really. Is. I think it's a nice film. The general. Just, you know, people seem to leave the theater feeling real good. Oh, sure. Which is nice. It's a, it's a whimsical about. fairy tale love story. So, what are you going to do the rest of the day, John? Want to hang around with me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, well, well, I was hoping to. Uh, I was uh, <laughs> hoping to just follow you around for a little while. Yeah. yeah. You can talk about the old days in the show business. Well, all right, listen. You're a great young guy, a terrific actor, and uh, continued success, Thank all right? You. Great to have you here. Sure. Nice to meet you. Fashion show just